Well, it's July 5th, quarter to 8 in the morning, and it's already 67 degrees, and I can feel it. A little bit's been going on. The evening primrose is blooming, but it's got dry too many times, so the buds have died out. If they dry out, they die out. Onion seeds are getting close. They're developing. My poor little lemon marigolds. The little flowers are drying up, but it does have a lot more buds. But look at the leek blossoms, all those seeds. Things are trying to grow or burn up either one. And put down some more. E, the empty nester, seeds of hope. When am I supposed to put the comfrey in the ground? Because look, it's growing. It's so pretty. It's now growing past what was eating them. I put more snail animals. Critter safe snail killer out. Snail and slug. And there's the artichoke. Here is the grapevine, which I've never got a decent grape off of it. If it sets grapes, they're usually covered with powdery mildew. If nothing else, the chickens like the leaves. Oh, breakfast. Some more breakfast. Pulled the squash out. They were a waste of time and energy and water. I got, I think, two little ones from each. So they're there. They're going to feed the tangelo tree. Look at that. The broad beans are coming back up. Hmm, that is interesting. I'm definitely going to buy a whole bunch of broad bean seeds. And I'm going to plant them over here. Because don't you plant them in the fall? More strawberries. Filled up all my buckets yesterday. Oops. And you can't stay out here. My problem is it's been so hot that when they look like this, if you don't pick them, by mid-afternoon they're just soft and mushy. So I have to pick them and eat them. Jerusalem artichokes. I see flower buds. And anyone that's eaten Jerusalem artichokes knows the majority of us have a problem with gas and it can be severely painful but I have found through the years that if you eat a little piece of Jerusalem artichoke the size of a golf ball but no bigger every day for five days then you'll have no problem you can eat all you want but the hard part is is just having the one little piece so I just dig up one little piece steam it eat it and after five days, I can dig all I want and enjoy all I want. Darn Jerusalem artichokes, they're too darn good to be painful. And my lettuce plants keep disappearing, so I put these over them, and they're still here anything to protect them. I put out snail bait. Come here. Come here. As they have come up three different times and they've disappeared. Because once they get to be a decent size, everything leaves them alone. It's just when they're the nice, tasty, juicy little things. There's the other Jerusalem artichoke in the ground. So I should have some good ones there. Not much going on here. The calendulas, powdery mildew, really bad. Don't know why I don't water them up there. I still have some violas over here. They're not doing too well anyplace else. And this one dried out really bad. Dried out so bad that it killed off all the little stalks that were growing. Cherry. I went and picked all of those tomatoes. Well, the better boy is out doing it, so it's ripening. One, two, three, four, five at one time. I picked the early girls. Well, these are coming in now. By the way, did you know you need to pick 
especially your tomatoes, tomatoes before you water them because they have a bad habit of exploding if they've gotten a little too dry they'll split because they're trying to take up the water and the skins can't expand fast enough for the amount of water the tomatoes are taking in and cherry tomatoes are really notorious for that lots of little split ones so pick them all before you water I've learned if they're starting to look halfway decent pick them they've got such good flavor you're not losing anything and this is where I took off all the pieces of my pretty pretty whoops coleus oh somebody needs to be fed this must be the rainbow blend now those are getting to be pretty good size so that must be hillbilly and as you can see I kind of cut back the broad beans this coleus is still doing fine get off of there look at all those cherries that's the volunteer how are we doing back here can't get to anything oh it looks like the birds are going to leave quite a few radish seeds this year of course the season isn't over I would say you're dry as a bone. I just watered everything. But, oh, the morning glory. I'm going to have a canopy of morning glories pretty soon. And look at the pretty iridescent flies. You can go away anytime now. There's a little bit of lettuce left. And here we have our Salvia. At least I finally stopped calling it sage. Look at the size of these leaves now. They still can get twice this big. Oh, look at the pretty water drops. I see a pity pan. Thank you for watching. Look what I spy on the 4th of July. Oh, it's about six and a half feet tall, one of them. And that one's about five feet. But we're silking. Do we have any pollen? Nope, not yet. And one thing you can do is collect the pollen in a paper bag. Who has paper bags anymore? But in a paper bag. When it warms up and it starts dropping its pollen. And then sprinkle it on the silks. Did you know that each one of these silks goes to one kernel of corn? And that's it. So each one of those little silks need to be pollinated. Oh, and I see pollen falling. I've got somebody crowing and I don't have a rooster anymore.